Good morning. Welcome to Sunday services today. We're going to be celebrating Pentecost Sunday next Sunday. That means that it's the time when God the Holy Spirit came and revealed himself as the active agent of the Godhead into humanity. In the Old Testament, we have God the Father speaking to us via prophets, priests, or kings. In the New Testament, in the first part of the New Testament, we have God the Son in the person of Jesus Christ, who speaks to us in relationship to salvation. He is revealing the Father's heart. And part of that revealing of the Father's heart is that he doesn't want to leave us as orphans from the time he leaves them and goes back to his Father. He wants us to realize that we will never be orphans, but that God the Holy Spirit will come and will abide in us. We have that sure scripture not only from what Jesus says to his disciples on the evening of Passover, and we're going to read that in chapter 16 of the Gospel of John, but we have it in the Old Testament as well. That portion of scripture which precedes the coming of Jesus Christ and yet speaks of his coming and what he's going to accomplish. And so I want to read from you from Ezekiel again from chapter 36 verse 25 to the end of 27. And here's what he says. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and to be careful to keep my laws. Do you notice how in this portion of scripture God is setting the stage for the coming of the Holy Spirit? God is saying to us that he's going to do a new thing. This portion of scripture forms part of the basis of the new covenant that Jesus instituted through Passover and through what we take every month through communion, which we did last Sunday. And so Jesus, in talking to his disciples on the night that he was betrayed, said some interesting things about who God the Holy Spirit is. It's interesting to me that many people over the years have said all kinds of things about him. And, and many people talk about him as that force of God, the spirit of God, the power of God. Uh, and, and it all pertains to be something that is just out there, you know, like wind, like breath blowing in the wind or something that seems to be can't quite grasp it you know I just can't quite get a hold of it have you ever tried to catch wind in your hand when you're driving your car you remember how we used to stick our hands out and we go like this with the wind and we'd have that feeling of movement there's power in wind we understand that but God the Holy Spirit is more than just all of those things that we might perceive him to be Jesus, in speaking to his disciples, clarifies something in their own hearts and in their own minds about whom he's sending in his name from the Father. Listen to his words to us in John chapter 16, verse 5. Now I'm going to him who sent me. That's God the Father. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth. It is good, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor or the comforter will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict 
the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment in regard to sin because men do not believe in me in regard to righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer in regard to judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. In a little while, you will see me no longer. Then after a little while, you will see me again. And the idea of seeing him again, of course, is his resurrection. Jesus says of God the Holy Spirit some very interesting things. Number one, we have in the Greek that he uses the pronoun he, which defines him as the third person of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He is the active agent of God working out salvation's plan and purpose which God instituted through the cross of Christ. The Holy Spirit has come to lead us to the whole truth. He's come to share with us what God's desire and plans for us is. His purpose is to empower us to anoint us with his presence so that we can be all that God has called us to be. That's pretty impressive to think that God has given us the helper. Actually, the word for helper here is the word paraclete. It means one who comes alongside. In many times, and, and, and different commentators talk about it in legal terms. He's like your lawyer, if you would. He comes alongside to advocate on your behalf and for you. And we see that in a number of places in the New Testament of how he functions and what he does. Interesting to me, Jesus says three things about him when he comes. First, he'll reprove the world of sin because it does not believe in me. The only sin that condemns a person to an eternity without God is the lack of belief that Jesus is the Christ sent from God for my sins. The second thing he talks about is he says that he will help us to understand righteousness. That word righteousness in scripture, I've always liked the, the, the idea that uh, one of my professors said years ago, he says, right standing before God. God, the Holy Spirit, helps me to understand that through Christ's forgiveness of my sin, I have now access to the Father and I have gained a right standing with God. What does it mean to have a right standing with God? It basically means that I can stand before God without shame, without guilt, without the fear of imminent punishment, but that God has accepted me as his son, as an heir with Christ. And so we see that. And then finally he says, he will also help the world with regard to, to judgment because the, the prince of this world is already judged. And so what Jesus is saying, the Holy Spirit will help the world understand that God is righteous in his judgments and that he has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our relationship with Jesus Christ. And apart from that, if we don't want to have Jesus as part of our, of our life, that's up to us. And with that, there's judgment. And that's basically what he says. And, it, and, and a lot of times we say, oh, yeah, you know, now you're getting to be like one of those old Holy Ghost preachers, uh, hell and fire and brimstone. Uh, unfortunately, Scripture is very clear about those kinds of things. 
One of the problems we have with God the Holy Spirit is our lack of understanding of who he is. So next week we want to talk a little bit about who he is. And we're going to do it from the book of James. Let me share with you this scripture. And we'll carry on with it. It's found in the third chapter. And it will help us to appreciate who he is and how we can work with him and how we can allow him to work in and through us. Here's what it says. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done, in the humility that comes from wisdom. Notice what he says here. He says, deeds done that come because of wisdom. Think of Ezekiel again, where God says that I'll put my spirit in you and cause you and cause you to walk in my ways. Think of those two terms together. And then it goes on and he says, But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, don't boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, of the devil. Notice where it, where it finds its origin. It's devilish. For where we have envy, selfish ambition, there we find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven, the wisdom that comes from heaven, this is God the Holy Spirit we're talking about here and who he's talking about here, is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruits, partial, sincere. He is a peacemaker who sows in peace and raises a harvest of righteousness. As we read these scriptures, I want us to realize that God the Holy Spirit wants to work that in and through us. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for your presence to us today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have come to live in us, to help us to know that we are the children of God, because you have put the desire, though I want to, in our hearts. And so, Father God, I just pray in the name of Jesus that as we are share together your word, that your word would find room in our hearts and we would allow you, God, Holy Spirit, to work in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you next Sunday.